This is AEDT 2150U, Digital Technologies and Advanced Teaching Methods. This week, we're going to discuss history of teaching about, with, and through technology. New approaches to teaching and learning were proposed, tested, and defended throughout history. With the first release of motion media, Thomas Edison claimed that books will soon be obsolete in schools and teachers will be replaced by projectors. These claims turned out to be unrealistic. Using the radio to broadcast instructions to homes, for example the Ohio School of Air, or using TV for educational objectives did not last long, with the exception of Sesame Street, which was one of the rare ETV or education televisions that discovered a successful formula. Since films were viewed as concrete and real, student-centered and interesting, ITV or instruction television classrooms were supported in the 1950s. In this first video, we will overview the history of using technology for teaching purposes, and we will discuss both successful and less successful strategies. The analysis questions for this video are, in your opinion, what are the drawbacks of programmed instruction? What are the differences between computer-assisted instruction and conventional instruction? From this video and based on your own experiences and readings, what were the fundamental issues that impeded on the continuity of some education technologies as they were first created? And how did these technologies evolve to meet their audience's needs? One of the strategies that turned out to be successful was the use of media to train the United States military personnel during the Second World War. The US Army Air Force produced more than 400 training films and 600 film strips during this period and reported about 4 million showing of training films to United States military personnel. During the war, training films were also used to prepare civilians to work in the industry. In addition to training films and film projectors, overhead and slide projectors were used to teach aircraft and chip recognition. Audio equipment was used to teach foreign languages and simulators and training devices were employed in flight training. After the war ended, the German chief of general staff said, we had everything calculated perfectly except the speed with which America was able to train its people. Our major miscalculation was in underestimating their quick and complete mastery of film education. Media researchers were concerned about the efficacy of teaching using particular medium, such as film, radio, television, or the computer, and compare it to live instruction. When no significant differences in learning were found between the different means of presentation studied, the focus of the researchers diverged into three focal points. The attributes of the technology, how the technology influenced learning, and instructional methods, rather than on the technology that delivered these methods. Let us examine two examples of innovative technologies that were created with the objective of ensuring students' best learning outcomes. Our first example is Skinner's teaching machines. Skinner, the American psychologist, author, inventor, social philosopher, and father of the radical behaviorism, introduced teaching machines in the 1960s to teach spelling and arithmetic. These machines detained questions from programmed instructions. With every correct answer, the learner was rewarded. Skinner was clear in pointing out that the real vital aspect of his approach was not the machine per se, but rather the arrangements of the materials so that the student could make correct responses and receive reinforcement when correct responses were made. Skinner's concept was misunderstood and two schools of thoughts arose one advocating for the value of the machine and the other supporting programmed instructions. The programmed instruction movement declined in popularity after it proved its ineffectiveness since it prompted students to go through a well-defined set of instructions in a linear sequence. Many students were bored 
while going through the program and some of them were unable to pass tests despite the fact that they successfully answered the questions programmed at the machine. Although teaching machines were not successfully adopted by education institutions, they had wide implications for education in general. For instance, the 1960s and 1970s computer-assisted instruction projects were a direct consequence to Skinner's teaching machines. Computer-assisted instruction reached its culminating point when U.S. federal government started funding research and development in schools, colleges, universities, and industrial laboratories. The market witnessed a merge between computer companies and publishing companies who visualized a new lucrative educational market. Computer-assisted instruction focused on brilliant practice and tutorial programs, which were characterized by a strong degree of author control rather than learner control. Students were asked to give simple responses, fill in the blanks, choose among a restricted set of alternatives, or provide a missing word or phrase. If the response were wrong, the machine would assume control, flash the word wrong, and generate another problem. If the response were correct, additional material would be presented. The function of the computer was to present increasingly difficult material and to provide reinforcement for correct responses. The program was very much in control and the student had little flexibility. Today's computer-assisted instruction evolved from original ideas and bases its activities on a variety of learning theories. It is used in educational environment and includes tutorials, drill and practice, discovery and problem-solving approaches, using games and simulations. Computer-assisted instructions provides one-to-one -one interaction, self-pacing, immediate feedback, privacy, self-directed learning, and multimedia, which helps students grasp concepts through multisensory approach. Implications of the teaching machine continue to be used in many fields related to education, more particularly the educational toys industry. Electro quiz are a typical example of a contemporary learning machine. In the 1980s, Electro quiz was released to the toy market. Electro quiz consisted of cards where players found questions and answers covering a great variety of subjects. Under each question and answer, there was a hole. Two wires with plugs were connected to the Jumbo's elephant, as you can see in the picture. To ask a question, a plug was placed into the hole under the question. The other plug was positioned into the hole under the answer. If the answer was correct, the lamp under Jumbo would light up. Our second example of a technological innovation that had great implications on education is Peppert's logo turtle. Peppert is an MIT mathematician, a computer scientist, an educator, a constructivist, one of the pioneers of artificial intelligence and the inventor of the logo programming language. Building on Jean Piaget's work on artificial intelligence, Pepper developed the logo programming language while he was at MIT as a tool to improve children's problem-solving skills. Pepper created a small robot, the Logo Turtle, which applied the programs that the children designed using the logo language. Children learned how to use math and analyze the different mathematical concepts while solving very concrete and real problems. Peppert's objective was to provide opportunities to children to use technology to support experiences. He believed that technology should help children experience knowledge and construct meanings. He developed Logo in a constructivist approach to teaching. Peppert explained the ultimate objective behind the use of the technology. He said, So, in a way, the computer becomes invisible. The computer becomes just an instrument. I said, if you ask that child making the picture, what are you doing? She would have said, making a picture, making a bird. It's interesting to compare this. Imagine going to a poet and saying, what are you doing? You'll be very surprised if the poet said, I'm using a pencil. The poet would have said, I'm writing a poem. Or maybe, just leave me alone, I'm busy. Of course, the poet was using a pencil. But that's not worth mentioning. 
and the same should be true of computers. The idea is quite simple. Let a child learn mathematics by speaking in mathematics about things that really matter to him. The child can make the computer do anything that he can describe in a suitable mathematical language. Pepper's original idea was to make students use math in a meaningful way by using the technology as a micro world in which they could experience mathematics. But what was happening in the classrooms was different. Teachers dictated programming instructions to students and asked them to enter the functions and see the results. In this situation, students were learning about technology rather than learning through technology, which was Pepper's original idea. Only a few teachers really understood the objective behind using the turtle or Pepper's logo language and let students' creativity lead them to learning math. Now, how about experiencing this logo language? Go to logo.20go10.org and take a few minutes to try it out. Start by clicking the examples. As you will notice, the program's commands are laid out on your right side hand of the page. When you scroll down, you can see a quick reference logo guide with the language used to write comments. For example, FWN will move the turtle forward n pixels. Similarly, with accessibility to microcomputers by the general public in the 1980s, schools were enthusiastic to use them for instructional purposes. Education institutions heavily invested in computers for classroom use reducing funds available for television equipment purchase and maintenance. ITV classrooms slowly diminished. By the mid-1980s, the main use of computers in the classrooms was far from being innovative. Teachers reported using the technology for their lab practice and teaching and learning about computers and computer-related skills such as word processing. With these practices, students were learning about the technology, the computers, instead of using it to assist students in developing the competencies they really needed. Using technology in education is not simply about choosing a specific hardware, software, or media. It involves a wide variety of theories and practices associated with designing, developing, using, managing, and ultimately evaluating both the teaching learning process and the technological resources to implement that process. The synthesis questions for this video are, in your opinion, what are the limitations of computer-assisted instruction in terms of learning? Many ITVs such as the Discovery Channel, the History Television, and CTVU have their audience and are quite successful in producing very popular programs. What is the success recipe of these ITV programs despite their lack of interactivity? And how can they be used efficiently in a teaching learning perspective? What is the learning theory behind Pepper's logo language? And what is the difference between learning about, with, and through technology?